does this year's draft reveal what the 49ers offense will look like next season? Because, I mean, I think people are thinking that there's going to be if not maybe a whole shift in what the offense is going to look with Trey Lance, but at least an evolution because he's so much different than Jimmy Garoppolo. So the so much different, I think, is blown out of proportion. And what I mean by that is obviously Trey Lance has a mobility advantage. And an arm strength look, advantage. Yeah, and an arm strength advantage. However, when you look at what Jimmy G is good at and what Trey is good at when it comes to throwing the football, they're pretty similar in the fact that their accuracy is within a certain range. And then after it goes to a point where they're not very accurate, like Jimmy G is not very accurate down the field. Neither is Trey Lance. He's not very accurate down the field. Um, so when we look at the draft, obviously I think this was something both you and I talked a lot about coming up into the draft is like people are downplaying how bad the rush the rush game was right they had dropped from one of the top number Second two in the league to, to 15th in the league yeah. right so that was a great what, call you were on that the whole way they didn't end yeah. up with Najee but they ended up with a guy who was almost as successful last year yeah and and my whole point was that they're going to need to put assets into that like I think the fans were just like most fans are just like Mostert and Wilson. We're set at running back. And I was like, nah, that's not the case at Didn't all. Any year. top rushing game needs guys yeah. that are drafted in the top three rounds. And that's just over the history of the NFL, 99% of rush games have somebody that invested a first, second, or third round pick. But whether you start Trey, whether you start Jimmy, you got to realize that down the field is still not going to be opened up. Like Jimmy is very inaccurate down the field. Trace is inaccurate down the field right now, but obviously he's young enough to where you hope that's going to be better, but to help them out the most, you're going to need a really solid rushing game. And I think that's where Shanahan bases his, his um, offense around. Anyways, they're going to run more than they're going to pass. So clearly having these two offensive linemen who are much bigger and, you know, going to play in the in the, in the um, offensive line in the run blocking scheme and then bringing in two running backs that are younger, stronger, healthier. Um, I think is, it shows that they're going to be run a run first team. And even in 2019, run second team too. it runs first, run second. Yeah. And even in 2019, where Jimmy G had his best season, he was still throwing less than 30 passes, attempting less than 30 passes a game. I mean, we all know in the oh, yeah. NFC Championship game against Green Bay, he only attempted eight passes. That's so right. um, their success comes from being first run dominant and then uh, passing it. And whether it's Jimmy G or Trey Lance, they're not going to throw the ball 40, 45 times. They're going to be throwing less than 30 times. So you got to give the handoffs to um, – to somebody else, and obviously Mostert and Wilson Jr. couldn't stay healthy. So Trey Sermon, I I, I believe, is going to get you know a bulk of the carries, around 20 carries, 20 to 25 carries a, a game, and then you'll see the other um, the other running backs get about you know eight to ten a game, and that's going to be the offense. I think they're going to throw less than they did in 2019. If Trey Lance is a starter, and if I, I think he's going to be the starter at some point, maybe not week one, I think he'll get eight or eight to ten carries a game. Uh, Raheem Mostert will get eight to 10 carries a game. Jeff Wilson Jr. will get at least five. Jeff, uh, Debo Samuel will get at least five. Trey Sermon will get 10 plus. They're, that's like 35 carries to go around. And the cool is when they do pass, it's not going to be like they'll have their screen game and they'll have the little slants and that stuff is still going to be there. But they're also going to have a lot of play action shot plays with Trey Lance booting out of the pocket and throwing on the run. And it's going to be a different element. I mean, he right. doesn't, he, he's, his accuracy is a work in progress, but he has a freaking cannon and he's pretty natural while throwing on the run. I think we're going to see some big, big play action plays that we haven't seen from this offense that we saw and, more in like Atlanta. Yeah. And his mobility is going to open up the back end of the, uh, of the um, defense as well, because they're going to have to spy him where they didn't have to spy, um, you know, Jimmy G. So it's going to take another uh, defender out of the secondary um, that is going to leave more openings for Trey to be able to throw to. And especially with Shanahan being the genius that he is and scheming, you know, he's going to be able to take advantage of 
there not being a double team on any of his guys and any of his uh, receiving options. So, and I think it's pretty interesting. Like if we look at overall the draft, I think there's two things that you can really take away is one. Um, they obviously put a lot of emphasis on the run game. And the second thing they put emphasis on is uh, experience because other than um, Trey Lance and senior ball and the, and the safety uh, out of USC, of, of, I, 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 I Afanga. Yeah. Afanga, yeah. Who, who looks like, you know, he's going to be a solid player. Everybody else they drafted have, have played over 30 games in college. And, and I think went to the senior bowl. Yeah. But I mean, they've all like played two, three years in college and, and played the whole season. So none of them had injury history. None, none of them really were injured where they couldn't play. Um, and all of them have a lot of experience. Well, except for I, Ambry Thomas, who opted opted out last year. Out, but yeah. even in his opt out, he still played over 30 games mm-hmm. in his three years that he did play. So, um, so like that to me shows that these they're they're looking for guys with experience that could come in and be contributors day one. And they were looking for people that can show that they could stay healthy, which obviously is a stark difference from the beginning of their regime when they were just taking chances on people. Well, what happened is the pandemic hit. It was really hard to scout this year. There was no combine. It was the probably the toughest scouting process ever. And so teams were conservative. Let's take guys with a lot of tape. Let's take guys that graduated. You know, mm-hmm. I don't think there was one player drafted from a historically black college. I'm sure there's, I mean, Steve McNair went to one. I mean, you, those are small schools and sometimes it's tough to, to scout them. But if you do your due diligence, a lot of times there's one or two or three every year and they end up being good. And this year there were none. And I think that kind of shows like teams weren't really going out on a limb this year. It's like, we need to see three years of you at Michigan. <laughs> Otherwise, right. I mean, we just, we didn't see it at the combine. It's tough. Yeah. 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 That could be true. That could be yeah. true. I think that definitely plays a role. But, you know, I, I'm glad that they did it because obviously health has been one of the biggest Achilles heels, if not the biggest Achilles heel for the Niners. So to take guys with very little injury history, I think is a big upgrade.